I'm John, and in today's upload, I'm gonna help you nail every one of your landings, not just with the Viper, but with anything that isn't a Death Dorito. I mean, a Delta Wing. Deltas can be easily landed by holding the nose up and managing sink rate with throttle. Sport jets usually require more finesse, necessitating that you fly the plane to the ground. So long as you keep your airspeed up, you can bring a sport jet in with no throttle at all. I'll start by going over approaches. The best landing starts with a solid, stabilized approach. The FAA defines a stabilized approach as one in which the pilot establishes and maintains a constant angle glide path towards a predetermined point on the landing runway. In other words, you should be picking a reference point to land on and consistently set your approach speed and angle of attack to land on that point every time. I shoot for in front of myself, but sometimes I overshoot and miss. It's okay to not be perfect here. Not every landing is going to be the best thing ever. A stabilized approach looks just like what you're seeing here. The jet comes in at a relatively fixed airspeed. It isn't rolling or pitching much, if at all, and it just looks stable. Hence the name. Maybe there's a more technical reason why it's called a stabilized approach, but for radio-controlled flying, all that matters is that you're keeping up airspeed and maintaining a glide path without porpoising or stalling. Here's an example of an unstabilized approach. I've personally witnessed many landings just like this one, and they all tend to end up the same. The pilot fights the jet all the way down until they yank the elevator and stall it into a pile of foam debris. It's very clear to me that this is a turbulent day, so the plane is being wing rocked like crazy. The main instability on display here is coming from the excessive elevator input, especially the final bit that stalls the right wing and causes an instant roll right into a crash. This is why a stabilized approach is so important. If you don't feel it, go around. You can always try again. Stalls are one of the things that you'll need to watch out for. Sport jets fly really well until they stall. RC pilots lack the feel of the plane as airflow separates over the wings. You'll have to learn how to fly by the skin of your fingers rather than by the seat of your pants. One way to easily predict a stall is to remember that banking while holding altitude increases stall speed exponentially. Many pilots will put the jet into a completely dirty configuration with gear and flaps dropped while putting around with low throttle, then bank and hold altitude before descending for the approach. The result is, all too often, similar to what happened here. The stall speed at a 45 degree sustained altitude bank angle is nearly 20% higher. If the jet stalls at 20 miles an hour, it'll stall at 24 miles an hour while banked and loading up the wings. You can see this demonstrated in real time with the Viper here. With flaps and gear dropped, trying to maintain altitude without enough airspeed results in an incipient spin, and if you're close enough to the ground, a total airframe loss. This is precisely why so many Vipers auger into the ground. Pilots load up the wings at a low airspeed, and airflow separates over the inboard wing. This results in a spin that develops faster than human reaction time, and nearly always causes a crash, with many owners looking for a new set of spare parts. This behavior is exactly why I always recommend the Viper to newer pilots who want to improve their skills and grow into bigger and heavier airframes. The stall behavior is very common in heavier jets. If you can understand stalls intuitively on a cheaper airframe, you'll be far less likely to crash much more expensive jets whose replacement parts cost significantly more than the parts for a Viper 70. Fortunately, stall recovery with most aircraft is really simple. Let off the elevator pressure and throttle up to regain airspeed. Even if you're low to the ground, don't give up flying the jet until it lands, one way or the other. Landings aren't simple, even when you're an experienced pilot. I consider them to be one of the hardest parts of flying, and in my opinion, they're the true mark of a pilot's skill. I firmly believe that all the best acro in the world doesn't mean a thing if you can't bring a plane home safely, whether that's full scale or model scale. So let's break this into easily understood chunks. Bank in the direction that you plan to enter the pattern from. Apply as much back elevator as you need to keep the plane in a shallow descent. Use some rudder to keep the nose pointed into the turn. Drop flaps to manage airspeed while approaching. Line up and apply gentle elevator pressure to bleed off airspeed. Finally pull the elevator enough to settle the jet down on the mains. Throttle up and take off again. And that's the essence of it. What makes landings with a sport jet like the Viper so difficult to consistently pull off is that it's an airframe that's prone to bouncing. Using too much flap with wind will make it bounce. Coming in too fast will make it bounce. It'll bounce if the ground isn't perfectly smooth. It'll bounce if the ground is as smooth as a mirror. It bounces. But you can minimize the bouncing with a well-timed flare and touchdown. 
Bouncing doesn't necessarily mean that you land it poorly. Some airframes just bounce a lot, and the Viper 70 is one of them. Sometimes you'll hit obstructions in the runway, and if you hit all the fundamentals but you bounced anyhow, guess what? Even low bounce wheels won't stop a Viper from bouncing. These are the wheels that you're seeing right now. Thanks a lot, Dubero. Even if you do bounce, just keep the fundamentals in mind. Line up with the runway, drop flaps, apply throttle as needed to manage a glide path, and fly the plane down to the ground. The Viper and many other jets definitely benefit from hovering over the runway for a moment or two to bleed off airspeed, which can stop a bounce from bouncing. The biggest improvement to your landings will come when the advice that I'm giving you here clicks and you start feeling confident that you can do it too. A lack of confidence is usually one of the major differences between a good pilot and a pilot who could be good. Flying is a mental state. You have to believe that you can fly in order to develop the skills to push yourself to be better. Build up your confidence by practicing the fundamentals of landing. Most important of all is adhering to a stabilized approach and committing to only land when you're not coming in like a wing rocky mess. The techniques that I've mentioned before don't necessarily have to be obeyed 100%. For example, airspeed can be gained by pushing the nose down. We've previously been told that it's bad advice to land a sport jet without throttle, but it's entirely possible to do it and not much more difficult than landing with thrust. It can actually be easier to land without throttle because a jet like the Viper is floaty and small amounts of thrust can carry it way past your intended touchdown point. To land without throttle, come in high, much higher than a standard approach. Drop flaps, push the nose down, and keep gently pointing it at the ground. Level out the bleed off airspeed and flare it on the mains. Throttle up and do it all over again. Get good at this and you'll be spot landing it every time. Wind is another story entirely. I personally recommend using as little flap as you can get away with on windy days. Aircraft as small as these models can get picked up by gusts and slammed into the ground. It's not a good look and it'll probably mess up your plane's day. I can't tell you how to fly, all I can say is that my experiences with wind make me land with small amounts of throttle and little to no flaps. Remember that even if your wings are rocking from turbulence, you can still have a stabilized approach. What matters is keeping a consistent glide path and committing to keeping the wings as level as possible while managing the sink rate. You have to react to what the plane is doing at all times by flying it all the way down to the ground. Hopefully these techniques helped you out. Be sure to check out some of our other videos on landing jets linked in the comments and let us know if this helped you out. See you next time with a new upload.